Hello, my beautiful friend, Seidel Schultz here, vocal intuitive and light-filled astrologer. And I am so excited to talk to you today about the sound of Chiron in the ninth house. So let's break it down really quick. Chiron looks like a key on your chart. And I really love that. At least I think it looks like a key. It looks like an upside down key on your chart. So if you're new to astrology, this is where you're looking and you can go to astro-charts.com to find your natal chart, to look at your natal chart. And you're looking for Chiron, um, the, the key looking thing, the upside down key. Um, you're looking for that image on your chart. It is so beautiful. So what is Chiron? Chiron is the wounded healer and when i listen to the sound of chiron in the chart because that is like where my gifts are is in the hearing um clear audience um when i listen to chiron in the nail chart i actually hear jesus why because jesus is the ultimate healer so in our natal chart chiron really represents where our um greatest wounding is and um where we can become the healer so where Chiron is at, this is where we can have a most personal relationship with Jesus in our life. So um, uh, obviously, uh, I believe we need Jesus everywhere. Um, but in where Chiron is at, where our deepest wounding is at, that's where we can get to know Jesus and invite Jesus in to our lives on a very personal level. So what we are talking about today, as we look at the natal chart, as you look at your natal chart, you can go through and see what house is Chiron sitting in for me. And that is the area of your life that Jesus can create the most impact and where you can create the most personal relationship with Jesus in your life. And then you take a look at what sign um, Chiron is sitting in, and that is um, like what Jesus is bringing to that area of your life, which is absolutely incredible. So today we're talking about Chiron in the ninth house. Um, so all of the houses, they can represent several different things. And for these series of videos, I'm really focusing on um, one of the pieces of that um so just know if i am sharing things and it doesn't feel like it's really resonating with you it could be because it's showing up in a little bit of a different way for you than normal like then i'm sharing also i do want to say this like a, a little um disclaimer as well it also makes a difference how what chiron is aspecting like how chiron is in relationship with a bunch of other things in your chart as well like is chiron conjunct your son um, because then it's going to really impact how you see yourself and or is it conjunct um another planet in that sign mine is conjunct hygia so um jesus and my health are like <laughs> Simpatico. They like, like, I really need Jesus to help me with my health as well. Not just what's going on in the sign, not just what's going on in the house, but also what is impacting or uh, aspecting the sign as well and how close it is to other signs. So there is that, and it's so fantastic. But the aspects, the kind of relationships that are going on with Chiron will impact how this shows up in your life. Okay, so let's jump in and get started. So Aries, let's start with Aries and, and the ninth house. So the ninth house is so much about um, education and learning and really like religion. Um, so we're talking about the institution of religion um, versus an, a, like the spirituality aspect. Um, I kind of put the spirituality aspect in the 12th house, just because the 12th house is more like subconscious in this in this cave place. So it feels very much like a very personal relationship with um, God, whereas religion is a little bit different. So um, what greater thing 
to have in the ninth house than Chiron, um, right? Especially with religion, religion and Jesus. They tend to like kind of go together if you are into Christianity. Um, but I really want to focus today's video on learning. And I and and as I say that and, and educa education, I think religion offers us the opportunity for learning. This is that is part of what um, a big part of what uh, religion offers is like I think about me going to church. What am I doing as I'm going to church? I'm learning about Jesus. I'm learning about God. I'm learning about all of these things. It's like uh, it's it's like school, right? And then when I go home and I have a personal relationship with God, that's where like twelfth house stuff is. Um, at least to me, this is like the gospel of astrology according to Seidel, right? So um, that is this. So we are looking at the ninth house based on the lens of learning. So Aries, um, when you have Chiron in the the ninth house this is this place where um learning can be a wound so as jesus is coming in and offering healing in this place um we're going to look at the signs through that aspect and what he can bring to you in that space so let's talk about aries to begin with aries is this um aries is fire aries is movement aries is is body movement really is so much body movement and so jesus is coming in and when we allow him to be in our in our lives in this personal place what he can bring to us in this is passion and learning and really um uh, what you'll see and experience is this physical movement in learning like a movement in your body and like really getting things started so i'd love to hear those that have um chiron in the ninth house when i go over this your sign specifically i'd love for you to comment below and tell me how you see that showing up in your life um i have done these series of videos people will message me people will comment um like post in the comments how they are seeing this accurately accurately happening in their life and it's so incredible so I would love to have you share that okay the next sign is Taurus um and it's so um Taurus is so great uh especially with this uh, with this learning thing uh I, I read a comment the other day was like one thing that you wish that people would know about you and it was like Taurus um I need time to process and this feels so accurate for Taurus in the learning, like in the the ninth house as Chiron's coming in and saying, let's let's take our time. Let's be really grounded in what it is that we're learning about and creating the foundation. Taurus feels so much about creating this foundation. Um, and so it's it's not just in the foundation of learning in general, it's a foundation of what you're learning in. So each time, each layer, each level that you're learning in, this keeps applying. And you'll experience this for any and all signs. For those that have Chiron in the ninth house, it's like this learning new things, and then you step into Aries, um, learning new things, and you're stepping into Taurus as you're doing that and really getting grounded in the information and um information is power it just really is uh and and so what happens when you get grounded in the information then it leads to abundance not just in information but what happens like the the effects of the information how glorious is that okay gemini we're just like going to have so much fun today talking about these things. I'm, I'm blowing through them. Okay, Gemini. Gemini, <laughs> you know, when I, I just like listen to Gemini in this sign um, or in this house with Chiron in there, it's just like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the information that we're learning. Let's really get it out there um, and get it out there in a way that feels um feels so good and so light and also helps other people understand in a really fun way one of the things that i love about gemini is the curiosity and the and the intrigue that a gemini will create especially with the moon sound right because the sound of the moon is where our 
the base of our sound sits. So um, I have a bunch of videos on the sound of your voice and um, the sound of each one of the signs. So you can go ahead and check those out as well. But Gemini's sound naturally creates intrigue for the people that are listening to their voice. And Gemini in this space of learning and Chiron in Gemini creates this space of curiosity and this space where Oh my gosh, they just love to talk about the things that they are learning about. And, and it's just in, in this really light and fun way um, that creates not only curiosity for other people, but also curiosity for themselves. And so this, the, the, it doesn't have to be heavy. It doesn't have to be um, confusing or anything like this. So as Jesus is coming in to the ninth house, in Gemini, for those that have Chiron in Gemini, he is making learning uh, fun and and curious and being able to like bridge the gap from uh, the question to the answer. And also, it just feels so big. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this: it feels so big right now as I'm sharing all of this to just say that. Um, Gemini in the ninth house is so, especially Chiron is like, so feels so much about teaching information and communicating information. And so when you're first beginning and you're, if you're a Gemini with Chiron, when you're first beginning, it's like, let's start having a conversation with Jesus about our healing and and about our learning about our healing and about healing our learning. Like, <laughs> all of that going together. So it's just like really, really communicating with him. And we always like, we always want to talk to Jesus. We want to have these conversations with him, but for Gemini, it feels very crucial. Whereas a Taurus might have a feeling um, and Aries will, might have more of an action and experiencing Jesus in more of an action centered way versus um, necessarily at like a communicative way. Obviously, we want to communicate, but I'm um, so I hope this is making sense. But with the Gemini, it just feels so important that you're saying the words and even possibly saying them out loud. Okay, so let's talk next about cancer. Cancer in the ninth house with Chiron. Um, uh, I cancer I mean obviously cancer feels like such a mom energy because it's so nurturing and so supportive and so warm and um oh my gosh one of the things that it, if and safe and one of the things that I I hear as I listen to cancer in the ninth house um with Chiron is this a space where it can be safe to learn and it can feel good like I as I'm talking to you about this, I can feel my body shifted and it like my body shifted from this place of like excitement with cancer or with um, Gemini into the space of uh, like really feeling safe. And calm and um, just like uh i see myself like sitting on the couch right here snuggled in blankets reading something um so there isn't that um anxiety or um elevated emotions that might come you might experience with learning um the i don't i just feel like so emotional when i think about that wound in the learning, like there's, there is like pain in there, like emotional pain. And when we bring Jesus in for those that have cancer in the ninth house, when we bring Jesus in, it's just like, it's like snuggling with the information and snuggling with the learning. How funny is that? I would love to know if you have cancer in the ninth house, is this what you experiencing? experience when you bring Jesus into your learning is like this ability to just like snuggle the information and and love the information and it's like it is safe for me to learn it is safe for me to grow it is safe for me to have healing in my learning and to create healing with my learning oh my gosh that feels so good okay the next sign is um Leo 
love Leo. It's so fun. It's so bright. It's so expressive. Um, uh, one word, sometimes some people might use to describe it as a little bit dramatic, um, but not necessarily like it, not necessarily in a shadow way, just big as in um, like, like expressive and really being able to share and shine in this information. So what is Jesus bringing you the ability to do is the ability to shine in learning. Mm, I actually really, really love that. Like learning, as I said earlier, knowledge is power. And the more we learn, the more we realize we don't know, <laughs> you know, the more we know we don't, the more we know, the more we realize we don't know. Um, but it really is just like with Jesus in the ninth house and Jesus in learning and, and in Leo, it's like this, it, like I get excited and I get excited to learn and, and I get excited to um, keep learning and want to learn and just bringing Jesus into the space where it's just like, oh my gosh, you know what I learned today? This is what I learned today. And start having those kinds of conversations with him about this. Um, I really love that. So that's Leo. And Leo is so bright and it is so uh, attractive. It really creates this like uh, the image that I see with Leo is like a bonfire. And what happens with a bonfire? A bonfire brings in a crowd. So when you are stepping into the space, space with Chiron in the ninth house, it's just like this bonfire that like really brings people in. And this it, it, it's so fantastic because Chiron is the wounded healer, right? So we're we're moving from our wounding to now the space where we become the healer. And so what is it offering us here in the ninth house? Um, this ability to go from like being really, um, uh, like I, I'm just seeing images, like this kid, like I can't do it. I can't learn. This is too hard um, to this place where we're like, let me teach you all about this thing that I learned about. Let me let me show you what I've learned. Um, and when we have Leo in the ninth house, it becomes this place where it's just this bright light where other people are like seeking you out, seeking you out. Like you can see a bonfire from a ways away. You can feel the heat of a bonfire from a ways away. And so it's just like, okay, Jesus, like let's learn all that we can about this and then help me teach it. Um, that feels so good. It feels so good. I I am loving the ninth house the more that I share this with you. And I loved the ninth house before. Okay, let's talk about Virgo in the ninth house. Oh, I just um I just love Virgo and all the detail that Virgo brings and and the attention to detail and and the intuitive nature of a Virgo. I feel like with Virgos, they have this ability to to see the detail and then to like just speak. And as they're speaking, they just like really all of a sudden get like downloads. Um, so it's like this it's a, a very much a mental sign. But as a Virgo speaks, they also like in this area. So I'm talking like in this area, they really create this like Oracle, like this speaking from the heavens. And it is so amazing so when we have jesus coming in to the ninth house in this virgo he's like oh and here is some detail here and here is some detail here but i i love um one of the things i'm just hearing so much right now is virgo creates this space where sometimes we can think virgo is very judgmental so what can tend to happen with a Virgo is a Virgo can tend when they because they see all the details, they can tend to be a little bit judgmental when they're stepping in the shadow. They can be a little bit judgmental about what's going on. So what happens when when we bring Jesus in to the info? So it's like what happens with Virgo in the shadow of, of learning is it's like, oh, this isn't right this isn't right and it's just like judging all the learning judging like judging maybe judging things about religion um 
uh, regardless of the religion, like regardless of the religion, like let's be honest, no religion is perfect. Um, <laughs> Jesus is the only one that's perfect. And all of the religions are currently run by very human people. Um, so there are a lot of imperfections in that. Um, and so it can be easy for a Virgo to get caught up in the imperfections of the information and the imperfections of how information is presented. But as we bring Jesus in to this space of healing our wounding with learning, healing our wounding with religion, what happens is it opens a perspective so that we can see um, for those with Virgo, so we can see a more um, eternal perspective with it. And in that space, it's like, oh, it creates a lot of clarity. And, and it allows us to be detailed from a place of compassion instead of detailed from a place of judgment. Um, and instead of detailed from a place of imperfection. And that is really big. That feels so huge for Virgo. And I feel like that is so informative, um, regardless where your Virgo, um, where your Virgo is sitting. If you have a Virgo sun or a Virgo moon, um, if you have Mars in Virgo, like this is a place where like that information can um, extend past just Chiron. Okay, Libra, Libra, oh my gosh, um, I, I just cannot even say enough how much Libra is about getting to the getting to peace instead of sitting in peace. Um, and what better person to help us do that than Jesus? Um, one of the things that it, it um, as we look at Libra and as we look at what Libra is, what is Libra? Libra is a peace maker, a maker of peace. Um, but in order to have peace, in order to get there or to be a maker of peace, what we do is we come into chaos. And sometimes like, um, um, so I was just thinking like, sometimes if I were to create organization, like, so if I were to create organization with all the papers on my piano and all the music that I have, what I would do, I would go into my bin of music and I would, um, take all of the music out. So what ends up happening is it looks like I'm creating a bigger mess. So right, we create more chaos and then we put things into order. So chaos to order, but I'm making peace with my music. And this is what, what is happening. Like Jesus is coming in and he's creating a place of peace in the thing, but it kind of sometimes can ruffle the feathers. So with Libra in the ninth house, it's, and I think one of the things that I wanna say is for Libras is don't be afraid to make the chaos. Don't be afraid to step into that place and be like, okay, we're gonna make this messy for a minute because we wanna to get to the place of peace. Yes, Libra is so much about peace and wanting to get there and they value that. And it's a natural thing that they value, but bringing Jesus in to like, help me create that order, help me make peace with my learning, make peace with my learning journey, getting there. Okay, the next one is Scorpio. And we have five signs left. Um, Scorpio is so deep. And um, one of the things, one of the things as I'm listening to this right now, and, and one of the things that I hear so clearly is being able to, one of the things that's so important for Scorpio that we they need to be able to do is um, go into this cave and feel safe. So what are you doing? You're bringing Jesus into this safe space where you can also bring your learning, like learning, bringing um, that learning into your safe space. So not necessarily going out, but coming in and going inward. Uh, so this very Scorpio is very much about going inward. As I see the image of uh, Scorpio, which is a scuba diver, it's like going deep. What are they doing? They're not going out of the water, they're going into the water. And so we bring this learning in and then we can kind of like communicate with Jesus about the learning that is happening. And that's when we create the power. And we can bring others. So those that have Scorpio in Chiron, um, Chiron in Scorpio in the ninth house, it's like bringing that learning in, going into the depths with ourselves with that learning. And then we go 
without and bring other people into that depths as well. So this is how like the healing shows up. It's like bringing other people into that depths. How incredible is it? Like, how incredible is all of this? Um, I share all these signs and I know um, others have shared this. I think I have shared this on previous videos. I'm like, I wish Chiron was in this sign in this house for me. Um, and and I, I've shared that. But one of the other things that I'm just thinking right now is how incredible to meet all of these people. How incredible would it be to meet someone with Chiron in the ninth house um, and and really talk to them about this and talk to them about their learning and ask them to bring you into their space to help you learn like oh my gosh you just get to be in the depths of learning with them okay sagittarius um oh this feels so good sagittarius um, I, I mentioned in the eighth house video, Sagittarius is a lucky sign because Sagittarius really combines the heart and the mind into one and then and then they share it. So when I hear a Sagittarius speak, it's just like right from the head down to the heart. So they really speak with intellect, but they speak to the heart um, and they, you can feel that when a Sagittarius speaks and when they're really speaking. So what is happening um, here in the ninth house when we include Jesus in that space is a Sag is that he is really speaking to the heart and mind and bringing these two places into union with what you're learning. And that's where you can be so powerful is when you have that union between the head and the heart. The heart dictates where we're going. The mind dictates how we get there, not the other way around, right? We wanna plant those seeds of desire in our heart and then receive the knowledge of how to get there in our minds. And so Jesus is doing that with our learning and really shining in that space. Okay, Capricorn. Um, Capricorn is so, Capricorn is so success driven. Um, and when I see this in the place of learning, uh, it's actually so, it's so great because what is learning? Learning creates success. It really does. It creates the boundaries and the borders to have success. You can't build something unless you know how to build it. Um, oh my gosh, I'm just like, one of the things that I'm hearing right now is we can learn things uh, like amazing things um, from really great books, but our most powerful learning is going to come when we take Jesus into this space of learning with us. So it's like, all right, um, let's listen to this book with Jesus and and let him help you create the boundaries, like creating boundaries around whom, like what you want to learn and what you want to learn right now. I'm just like feeling so much of this um, Capricorn energy is like crazy out here, like learning, learning all these things to learn and all this information to remember. And, and Jesus is like, takes him by the face and he's just like, just focus on me. Just focus on me and we'll create a space where you can just like really um, be tight in that and be tight in the learning. Um, so you kind of, it kind of like, uh, so funny, because you would think that cancer would create boundaries. Um, and cancer does need boundaries. Absolutely, cancer needs boundaries. But here in the learning, it feels like Capricorn, like really creating those boundaries um, uh, for learning and for growth. So bringing Jesus into this space where we're like, okay, um, what boundaries do I need to put? Like what structure, and I usually say structure with Capricorn, but I'm really saying boundaries today. Like what boundaries do I need to put around my learning so that I can have the best learning for me? Okay, two signs left. Aquarius. Aquarius, oh, I love this. For Aquarius in the ninth house is just, because um, Aquarius is the jet. Um, Aquarius is the jet of all the signs. Like this is the image that I see with Aquarius is a jet. And um, the person, like you get to be the pilot of the jet for those that have Aquarius in the ninth house. Um, you get to be the jet. And what is a jet? <clears throat> a jet is not a one, <clears throat> a one, excuse me. It's not a one prop plane. It's not a one person plane. 
A jet is for lots of people. So when you bring Jesus into your space of healing, then you also get to bring so many others with you. And they really dials in the healing that's happening in the learning. I feel I just like I as I talk about the the ninth house, it just um, and I know it's like Jesus is the healer, but I feel like I'm I'm saying more than I've said in any other video. Learning is bringing the healing, healing in the learning, like healing to the learning and learning to heal. Um, and that just feels so ninth, like that's what it feels like the ninth house is so much about um, is healing that and like being really direct. Like um, one of the things that I just hear for Aquarius is like, uh, how fast can I create my healing? Not as in a not in a rushed way, but like what's the most direct route um, to healing? What is my most direct route to learning this thing that I need to learn? Um, so we're we're in trials, like learning from our trials. Okay, what is it that I need to learn right now? What are you trying to show me right now? I'm going to school. Okay, I'm in math. Um, what is the most direct route? To learning this thing that I need to learn. And so then you create that, you create this direct path. Jesus helps you create this direct path. And then um, it just explodes. And then you can take other people on that journey as well. How exciting is that? That seems so exciting to me. And then I'm like, okay, do I, where are my Aquarius ninth house Chiron friends? Because I want you to take me on that journey too. Okay. Um, our last sign is Pisces. Pisces. Oh, Pisces is so great. And Pisces is so, um, Pisces is forgiveness and Pisces is, Pisces is heaven. Pisces feels so much like heaven to me. And, um, and healing because uh is there any to me uh, as as i've experienced forgiveness um it really feels like there's nothing faster for healing than forgiveness um and and forgiveness is this, this direct um connection to heaven one of the things um and that's one of the things that i see as i as I really listen to Pisces, Pisces is a water sign, but it feels to me like an air sign because of how light it is. And one of the images that I see with Pisces is like this buoyancy, like a, a life preserver in the water. Um, and I kind of want to cry. Um, and this is, this is what happens like baptism, baptism saves us right? It's one of like, it's, 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 it's a saving ordinance. It's, it's in, it just pretty much every religion. I think, um, this baptism, like whether you're baptized as a baby, whether you're baptized as an eight-year-old, whether you're baptized as an, an adult, like this baptism is something that like it saves us, um, spiritually. And so, gosh, as I am just sharing this, it's like, um, what is Jesus bringing those that are in Pisces in the ninth house? This, this learning that saves and this learning that like really touches us on a soul level and, and really gets us spiritually. Um, so for those that have Pisces in the ninth house and Chiron in Pisces in the ninth house, you're learning, um, especially for you, your learning isn't just um, in the, it's not just mental, it's not just emotional, it's not just physical, you are learning on a soul level. And, and you are learning at like this really deep level. And so the more you can, again, I'm going to say just like I said earlier, like, I think, I think all this can apply, you know, obviously, we want to include Jesus in our learning, right? Um, so, so we do that. And, and like I said, you know, we want him everywhere in our life, but this is specifically for those that have um, Jesus in Pisces, right? But but when you specifically bring Jesus into your learning, you can learn and have healing on a soul level, and it changes you forever. And then you get to share that 
with other people in this really beautiful way, the way that you were designed to learn. So incredible. Okay. And that is all of the signs for today. And the next video will be all about the 10th house, which is all about business and being in public, which is so exciting. I'm so excited to share that. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, if you liked this video, if this video was helpful for you, um, like and subscribe and watch for the next video. Okay, I'll see you next time. Bye.